Well, hello everyone. It is evening here in Texas and I've been working on some photographs tonight. We had a presentation on rodeo photography last month uh, given by a lady in our club who works for this organization and takes photographs at their weekly events. It's uh, like a mini rodeo and uh, th these particular events are on a Tuesday night uh, dark outside and artificial lighting, fluorescent lights, very very poor lighting and she told us uh, you have to work with very high ISO and then just kind of try and deal with the noise when you process your photographs. So I decided to take two cameras with me. I took my Olympus EM1 Mark III with the 40 to 150 2.8 Pro and on the right I took my Nikon D810 with the Nikko 70-200 2.8. As a cost comparison, the E1 Mark III ran me about $1,900. The uh, D810, when I bought it, ran me about $3,100. So $1,200 difference or so just on the body. The 40-150 Pro on the left ran me about $1,400. And the Nikkor 70 to 200 on the right, about $2,400. So $1,000 difference in lens costs too. So overall, using the gear on the right cost me about $2,300 more than what I paid to get the photograph using the gear on the left. Now you hear all the time from people that four thirds is no good in low light. Uh, these tiny sensors don't work. Big sensors gather four times the light. Well, that's nonsense. I mean, it, it falls on the sensor per unit area. So at 2.8 on the left, you gather the same amount of light per unit area of the sensor as 2.8 on the right. The only reason the sensor on the right has more light is because the thing is bigger. But the light per unit area is the same. I shot both in manual mode both with the same settings and there they are at top right. Because of the light I had to use an ISO of 12,800 because I wanted a shutter speed of 1 800th of a second or more. So at ISO 12,800 at f2.8 I could use 1 800th of a second. Now that's really high ISO. So to me this was interesting to see how my little four-third sensor performed uh, rel relative to my Nikon D810 full frame at the same event. Just as a point here, the four-thirds format I think worked a lot better because in the landscape format in this setting of course there's hordes of wasted space on the right and on the left that you just don't need and with the proportion of the bull and the riders and the height of the image uh, so later on I cropped this to a four-thirds format. Now these images too have zero settings applied. When you pull them into Lightroom, Lightroom does some basic stuff. Well I zeroed all that out. These are as they came from the camera. So if I zoom in to 100% on that you can see. On the left there you can see noise in the wall, speckle, speckling in the background, uh, on the saddle and so on but on the right too my Nikon has quite a lot well a lot of noise as well now it appears that it might be a little bit finer than the noise in from the Olympus just because it's higher resolution and so on but many people seem to claim that full frame <coughs> excuse me just don't have noise but as you can see that's just nonsense Full frame cameras do produce noise as well at high ISOs. Sometimes my D810 performs better, sometimes worse, sometimes about the same as my four thirds bodies from Olympus. But there's not a massive, terrible difference at ISO 12800 between my four thirds body on the left and my full frame body on the right. So then what I did, I cropped each of those to 100%, although we've looked at those 
there at 100% each. So I won't worry about uh, showing you those crops because it's the same as this, except here we can look over the whole photo and examine the noise. One thing you will notice, because for, to get an equivalent field of view on my four-thirds body, I use a wider lens or a shorter focal length. And a shorter focal length by nature has a deeper depth of field. So if we zoom in, and these animals were both in relatively the same position, you can see the people in the background there, because it's a full frame and at that field of view, they're quite blurry. Whereas here in the Olympus shot on the left, you can make out their faces and so on, because it was a shorter focal length that by nature has a deeper depth of field to give me a similar field of view. So that can be an advantage or a disadvantage. If you're wanting to get the people more in focus, well, I couldn't do it with my full frame because at f2.8, it couldn't, it, well, there, I, if I dropped it lower than 2.8 to try and bring them into focus, I would have had to use a much slower shutter speed and then I wouldn't have been able to freeze the action on the rider and the bull. So it just depends, but it's interesting there just to see that difference. Now, if you, let's look at what I actually did with the photographs. So there's my finished product on the left, and there's my finished product on the right. So these are both with white balance adjusted, so whites are more white than the, the light was in there, and cropped, uh, there's the Nikon shot on the right cropped to a four thirds proportion, which works a lot better with it. But if I zoom into these at 100%, oh, before I show you this, uh, let's just pop back to here and to there. Because those are the same photos. All I've done here is I've adju adjusted the white balance, tweaked the uh, exposure slightly to get it more to what I wanted, cropped them to what I want, and four thirds on the right. But at this point, no noise reduction. There is the output from the cameras with no noise reduction. And you can see this photograph from my Nikon D810 on the right is noisy. There's noise in there. It's not this beautiful, smooth, noise-free photograph from this full frame. Again, ISO 12800, so I would expect noise. But look at that shot with my EM1 Mark III on the left. Yes, it's noisy too, but if you look at both of those, is the noise on the right worth about $2,300 more? I don't think so. So uh, when people tell you your four-thirds camera is no good in low light and useless at high ISO, and you yearn for a full frame thinking that will be a panacea for all your noise nightmares, that is not necessarily true. Full frames have noise as well, just a different type of noise. And in my opinion, comparing those two, if you look at the boot there in the saddle and the boot there in the ropes, well, I don't know if there's about a $2,300 difference that makes it worth it. In fact, in some ways to me, my my Olympus image on the left looks a little better. So then I took those two and I ran them through Topaz Denoise, just likely, not major processing. And then this is the final result there. So you can see there's still noise in here on the right. There's still a bit of noise on the saddle and in the background, but uh, you can do more processing in topaz or harsher processing, but I just did it quite lightly on both image images because I don't mind that grain. I think it looks okay. If you were shooting with film in such poor light, you would have grainy results as well. So for me, I don't have a problem with that at all. And in my opinion, the results I got with my small four-third sensor on the left are pretty amazing for a camera that people claim, or so many claim, is no good at all in low light. 
So if all you have is a four thirds camera, uh, don't feel short changed and don't think you can't use it in low light because with a little bit of work and processing and perhaps using topaz, you can get very good results with it. And in my opinion, uh, I don't think it's a major problem. Uh, I've got nothing against Nikon. I love my Nikon gear as well. I enjoy using it. I bought a Z6 and one of these days, maybe the second or third iteration of the Z6, I'll buy an upgraded body there. I get fantastic results with it, but I also get fantastic results with my four thirds body uh, or bodies, often in conditions where so many people claim they are no good. So don't believe all the hype. Try and use your camera, see what you can do. And I thought some of you uh, who kind of yearn for full frame thinking that's what you need and it'll be a panacea to all your problems. Well, not necessarily so because you can still get fantastic results. And what I especially like with these, both cameras live, same event. And if I had one or the other, those were the results I would have gotten. And I would have, if I'd only had Olympus, I would have been thinking, oh, maybe if I had a, fourth, a full frame, it would have been better. Well, no pretty much the same at this event. I don't have any plans on selling my Nikon gear. I love it. don't have any plans on getting rid of my Olympus gear. I love it. I just choose whatever I think is best for the job at hand. And when I can, I take both. If I've got a lot of hiking and stuff to do, then I leave my heavy Nikon gear at home and usually take just four thirds. So there you have it. Hopefully some of you might find that helpful and interesting.